is this a joke? You guys are messing with me, right? That's probably what you guys are thinking today because A, it's April Fool's Day and B, it's the start of Mercury retrograde, right? I was actually gonna come on here and do a joke and say like, oh my God, I don't even know what I would say, but I figured it's probably in my best interest not to startle the internet right now. Everything's been a little bit extreme. And I think today, these times, is not the time for surprises. I think we've all had enough of surprises lately. How are you guys doing? How are you feeling? Please excuse me the fact that my energy is so high today. I woke up this morning. I was ready to talk about the, the, the solar eclipse that's happening in the sign of Aries at the very end of this week, April 8th. Well, the start of next week, I should say. It's Monday. Oh my gosh, if you haven't seen that video, make sure that you check it out. This solar eclipse, super moon solar eclipse, by the way, is going to be a game changer. So I'm a little amped up. I'm a little excited. On top of that, I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in forever. As you guys can tell by the title of today's video, we are going to be diving into the week ahead. Now, I consider, do I go out, do I do Astro Chat Live tonight? Or do I do a video where I'm shuffling and pulling cards for you guys? And I was kind of stuck, kind of tossed between the two of them. And I think that the best move for this week is to do a full breakdown of the week through tarot. So go ahead, get cozy, get comfortable, and let's go ahead and dive right in. So like I said, again, today, April 1st is April Fool's Day and it's Mercury retrograde. Now, for those of you guys that don't know, Mercury rules communication. It rules how we process information. It also rules the small working bits and pieces that help our phones, our cameras, our laptops, our cars to function and to work. And speaking of cars, it also rules transportation, the ability for us to move from point A to point B. So that can be a car, a plane, a bike. These are things that when it's Mercury retrograde, they tend to fall apart. They may need a little bit more maintenance. There may need to be a little bit more clarity, clarification, those types of things. We have to go ahead and make a lot of room, ample room and space for things to kind of go hey wonky and sideways as they tend to do during this time. So instead of getting frustrated with this energy, just kind of respect it, go with it, make ample space. We're gonna be feeling this for the next three and a half weeks and then some. Chances are some of you guys have been feeling the effects of it because we've been in the shadow phase for a week and some change already. This is also one of those height, heightened times where you can hear from ex, exes, ex relationships, from people that you were intimate with to friendships. So make sure that you are aware of that. And if you find yourself feeling called to reach out to someone from the past, I would honor it. Now I know for a lot of you guys, you'll say, well Jess, isn't Mercury retrograde like, isn't this things that it is that we're supposed to avoid? Everyone's situation is different and you guys know I'm always gonna be authentic, number one, and honest with you, number two, and keep it straightforward, <laughs> number three. And everybody's situation is so different, so it's not for me to tell you if you should avoid communication with someone from your past. At the end of the day, you know what that relationship was like. You know if it was healthy or conducive to anything positive and good within your life. And if it was, and if you could see a second round or a third round or a fourth round or a fifth round, then listen to your discernment, bring it to your angels and your guides, trust that feeling, trust that vibe. Maybe if I were you and if if you were asking me BFF to BFF sitting at the table right now in the living room, I would say keep it on the low, you know, maybe not make a, like a whole public announcement of, oh yeah, we're getting back together during Mercury Retrograde. That's going to backfire. Nine times out of 10, that will backfire. Um, but everything else, just kind of go at your own pace and feel things and see things out. Now, I will say that if the energy has ever been toxic, abusive, or manipulative in any way, stripped you of your power, these are things that if I were you, I would say no to and don't ever really allow them to re-enter back into your life. There is too many wonderful people out there that will love you, that will care for you, and look after you in the way that is that you deserve for you to go back to places where there has been an absence of respect, kindness, consideration, grace. You know, we don't need that. So, so that's something to look out for. Again, April 1st, uh, we have Mercury retrograde for the first time, and it just happens to be on April Fools. So while I'm talking to you guys and going breaking down the week one by one, I do want to continue to shuffle cards for you guys um, and see what type of energies Monday through Sunday that is that we are going to be dealing with. 
So the second transit that I want to talk to you guys about is the fact that Venus is going to be directly conjunct Neptune on April 3rd. Now, speaking of connections and people of the past and a softness and vulnerability to returning back to things that once were and that maybe could once be again. But when Venus directly conjuncts, because she is going to directly conjunct Neptune, this is when we start looking at someone or something through the lens of this glittering filter. This is a wonderful time, the days around the third, to plan a date, to mix and mingle, to say yes to love and romance, often to soften your heart to the ideas of connection and coming together, forgiveness, compassion. If there's someone that is reaching out to you that or that you feel like you need to reach out to and say, listen, we had a misunderstanding here, I'm sorry. This is one, gonna be one of those times where the planets are really shining their light and beaming their love all over you. This is a wonderful time again to lean into the realms of rekindling romance, rebuilding bonds, connecting, making plans for the future, even though Mercury is retrograde, you can still make those plans, but still make a little extra wiggle room for the chance that things need to kind of like shift, change, pivot as they inevitably will with, with any type of retrograde, right? We tend to change our minds. I, to me, I think it's the thought and the gesture that counts. It goes a long way because it's showing that person or it's showing you that you're thinking about that person, that you are trying to make an effort to connect and that you may be in a space where you're open and that you're receptive. And that goes a long way, especially in today's times where connections, relationships, and people seem so divided, they seem so separate, they seem so far away, even if they're in the same room. Having said that, for those of you guys that are in relationships right now where the eclipse or this energy of the North Node and Chiron transiting through Aries has been pulling you away from past relationships, past connections, this is the time to start envisioning your, envisioning your life. Rosy, sunglassy way that you can look at your life right now. This is a time to have hope for your future. This is a time for you to get excited about what can happen. This could also be a time for you to revamp and change small, subtle, your look or your energy. Even a small change, a small shift can make a big, a big difference. The other thing that I want to tell you is that um, this is the week to stay open, to stay flexible to how the planets are going to pivot. Number one, because there is the element of surprise with us moving closer and closer and closer to the energy of the eclipse happening in the sign of Aries on Monday. But number two, we have, and it's not direct right now, but it's direct enough, it's, it's pretty close enough that we have Jupiter and Uranus directly conjunct and almost directly conjunct um, in the sign of Taurus and this is something that we're gonna be feeling for months 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 This is a major major conjunction Basically what this is going to do is activate new New energy pivots in your life things that are going to be good for you for the greater for the future so it's in our best interest sometimes to allow ourselves to kind of drift and kind of get a, a pretty picture of what it is that you see for the garden that is your life. So let's say you've been up until this point, you've been tending the toil, pulling the roots, weeding certain things out of the garden of your life, and now you're looking at the dirt. It can be really disheartening to see the sun beating down on this dirt to think like, oh my gosh, can anything grow in this space? But this is the time for you to envision and see for yourself, well, what is it that I need? What If I could build anything for myself and the sky be the limit, what would that look like? And to start to really envision it and picture it. Now, of course, the universe will throw wrench, wrenches into our plans and make us kind of pivot and change as needed, but it's always going to be for the betterment of our future selves. Oftentimes, we can't see it in the moment, but it still gives you the space to envision, to imagine, to set intention for what you think for yourself right now. Now, I know that that idea is a little bit controversial here on the in, on the internet, especially in the spirituality community. There's always a fight, a battle between the opposing sides, and I like to exclude myself out of it usually, usually, between do you set intention during the eclipse or do you let go, let God, because the eclipses are dangerous, powerful, and they could change your life forever, and like, why would you wanna be a part of this powerful energy? Me personally, I don't believe in that fear-mongering type of concept. I believe that 
every single one of us is an important factor into what is happening here on the globe and the universe in our planets and our cosmos and if everything is breaking down and stretching forward into the future and i'm a part of the collective then that means that all of these things are happening too for my highest and greatest good as well as that of my neighbors and my planet so why not in include my voice in these changes it also means that if you set intention, not everything is always set in stone. Not everything is dead set and will have to be that way. You can always pivot, change, talk to the universe, talk to your angels and your guides and say, you know what, I've had a change of heart. And that's not, that's not a bad thing. That's, if anything, I think we should be empowered, especially as women. I'm sorry, but I'm a feminist at the end of the day, through and through. Especially as women, we should be able to say, you know what, I changed my mind, and I said this at this moment, but I'm kind of feeling it now. Now, for those of you guys that wish to lay low, to lie dormant, and to not use this time to set intention because you want to see how things pan out, more power to you, honey. I'm with you all the way. That is that is your thing. Do you. But for me personally, with an eclipse like this, this is the time when I would absolutely, for myself, set intention for things that I know I'm going to want and need. Bravery, courage, the ability to believe within myself, the ability to find myself and discover myself even more than I already have, to be able to fulfill my purpose to a greater vision that even I can't even envision and imagine for myself. Whatever that looks like, I'm open to that. At the end of the day, this is how I want to feel, this is how I want to think, this is how I want to approach the world, this is how I want people to treat me, and those are things that, for the most part, aren't changing, and I like to use the eclipse in order to activate that energy, especially when things are going to be radically changing regardless. So that's just my little two cents. The other thing that I want to talk to you guys about is Venus is going to enter into the sign of Aries. Wow. April 4th. That's just another entry point of some more energies that are coming through and saying, listen, what do you want? This is what I want. This is what I'm attracted to. This is what I can do. This is what I'm capable of. This is what I'm going to chase. It's not a very quiet energy. It's very sexy. It's va va boom. It's I am here. I am great. You don't need to agree with me. It is what it is. I'll see you. I'll see you when I see you. And I love to see every single one of us empowered within those energies. Let's go ahead and bring it. Let's keep the energy going. Let's keep the vibes high. For some of you guys, there are certain things that you are going to be incorporating, whether it be diet, lifestyle, books that you read, music that you're listening to, there's going to be some kind of change that it is that I'm seeing and sensing this week that is going to inevitably work to empower you. And I'm so here for that. Now, one last thing that I want to talk to you guys about is not only is Venus going to be entering in the sign of Aries, but she is going to be in this beautiful trine, beautiful, no, beautiful sextile. I, I want to say trine, but it's not. It's a sextile with Pluto transiting through the sign of Aquarius. Now, Pluto rules our ability to be manipulative. Now, when I use the word manipulative, I'm not saying that you're using your power to convince, to coerce for negative or for bad. That is your intention. It means that you understand that you make a difference, that your will, your intention could be enforced or be contributed to the environment and that that should be taken into consideration. So that's what I mean by manipulation. It's your ability to say, this is what I want. This is my will. How can we make this happen? And then that tends to unfold. So when Venus locks arms with Pluto, she feels empowered. She feels sexy. She feels like not holding herself back. For some of you guys, this is the time for you to wear bright, bright colors, reds and purples, things and, and royal blues, things that make a statement that say, I'm not here to stand behind others. I'm here to stand up for myself. I am here to make a difference. I too have a voice. I have something that I am attracted to that I want to say, that I want to state. Now, for some of you guys, um, I was just talking to someone who's in high school right now and they have a little crush and they were asking me and they were texting me. I don't want to say too much. I don't want to say too much. But they are going to be asking someone that they really like, that they have eyes for, um, out to be their partner, to be exclusive. And this is one of those weeks that I think it's a wonderful time to do that. And how even though Mercury's retrograde, because some of you guys are going to be like, yeah, but Mercury's retrograde, like, won't it backfire? No, no. 
it doesn't necessarily have to. You may fumble with your text message. You may text the wrong person. You may be awkward when you say it, but it tends uh, overall, the energy seems to be very receptive. It seems to find things very charming and this is the week to do it. And that's exactly what I told them. And it can be really scary, but it is such a wonderful, exciting chapter in your life to say like, listen, I like you. Like, I think there's something special about you. And you know, what if we just saw each other and what if we just spent a little bit more time focusing on each other and you know, spending time together. And there's, that's, that's the, the energy that is I'm seeing here. So that's very exciting. Just me on the outside looking at now, you guys know I've been in a relationship for, for, for quite some, for some time now and we're very happy together. So for me personally, this, how I can envision myself using this energy for the week is to spend some time talking with my partner about the future and what it is that we see for ourselves and the little bits and bits and pieces and pictures of, or the bits and pieces of the picture that is that we see for our lives. And I think also to play is really important. Spending quality time together is very important, especially when life be life in, you already know. And um, we also, this is sidebar, but we also work together, you know, so, we do a lot of projects together and sometimes we get so, we're both very ambitious, so sometimes we get so caught in these greater <laughs> visions that it is that we see for ourselves separately and then we're helping each other together outside of the relationship that it's so important to say, listen, let's go ahead and check in, let's go skating, you know, just something cute, something simple and it may not be perfect, it may not be the biggest display, but it's just this week does seem to be very playful and cute and charming. It doesn't have to be anything outrageous, but it does make a difference. So let's go ahead and look at these cards here, shall we? Okay, so the cards that we have pulled up for Monday, wow, look at that. We have the Eight of Swords, the Two of Cups, and the Ace of Swords. The Eight of swords the two of cups and the ace of swords now right away on monday that's today this is going to be a huge nod to get out of your head try to get out of your head if you are not even okay with relation with the two of cups sometimes we think about our relationship with others for this for this moment i want you to think about your relationship with yourself two of cups is two different energies that are receptive to each other and they want to work together. This to me is giving finding harmony and balance even if things around you may not be making sense, even though you may be fearful, even though you may not know what's going to happen in the future. It's about finding some type of compatib compatib compatibility in your own body. What can you do on Monday that pours back into yourself, that gives to yourself? For some of you guys, I'm actually seeing that you are a little nervous to reach out to someone or someone's, maybe create a group event. But on Monday, this is a wonderful time to make plans with something or someone for the sake of fun and joy and coming together for the remainder of the week. This seems very promising. And for some of you guys, you may be thinking, wondering, like, what if they say no? What if this is... What if it's not well received? What if, what if, what if? And... Yes, there, that's there because we also have the Eight of Swords. Remember, we have the Eight of Swords and that shows us anxiety and tension. But Ace of Swords says that regardless of that anxiety, regardless of that fear, regardless of that doubt, regardless of all the things that could go wrong, still do it. Still try. So there, there may actually be some really interesting information, some news, something that you hear Monday or the days following um, from someone else, especially with the Ace of Swords coming through, it may give you a little bit of anxiety, but I do want to tell you that overall, I do get a sense of you being prepared and capable and ready regardless. On Tuesday, we have the Sun, we have the Five of Cups, and we have the Queen of Swords. The Sun, the Five of Cups and the Queen of Swords. Now, Queen of Swords is no frills. She is no drama, no drama, no dramatics. She knows what she wants. She says what she got to say, and it is what it is. So with the Sun card and the Five of Cups here, there is an ability for you to enforce boundaries for yourself so that um, whatever may pop off, especially with Five of Cups energy here, if there is any type of lingering disappointment, if there is any type of feelings of sadness or um, 
disconnection. For some of you guys, you might feel disconnected from something or someone or disconnected from yourself. There may be some things that are bubbling up. It feels like you're still capable enough to handle it and to find the light at the end of the tunnel. This may be one of those days too where there's like good things that happen and like things that just kind of set you back. But hopefully on Monday, you made plans for something to, for you to enjoy this week, whether it be linking up with friends, whether it be making a meal for yourself on Wednesday, like a whole self-care day. There's something here that is that I'm seeing that you would have the rights to look forward to to enjoy in the near future. I hope that makes sense. Now, Queen of Swords is very like, this is my list. This is what needs to get done. It's check, check, check. Um, I'm doing this for myself. I'm doing this because I have to. It's taking care of the hard things so that you can enjoy, you know, the other things of life that are more enjoyable. Maybe this could be going to the doctor, making a doctor's appointment, handling your taxes for those of you guys that still haven't done that. Tick, 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 right? Um, there are things that may not necessarily be the highlight of our day or the highlight of our lives, but it needs to happen. It needs to be, it needs to happen. It needs to be taken care of. And I think Tuesday is a day where you're going to see the energy of you taking care of those things, doing difficult things and then rewarding yourself because you did it. You got it done. Now on Wednesday, okay, okay. What happened on Wednesday? We have the nine of swords, four of pentacles and the hermit card, the nine of swords the Four of Pentacles, and the Hermit card. So remember how I told you that it seems like there's going to be a day where you kind of do something for yourself? Wednesday is going to be the day, I think, that for someone here, maybe the majority, where things may get a little turbulent, maybe rocky, maybe plan for Wednesday to kind of lay low. The Nine of Swords showing up, especially with the lingering Eight of Swords that we were feeling on Monday of just like this impending thing that's happening, seems like it's enough to lock you into place on Wednesday. So maybe something is happening, an event, or maybe you're hearing news of something, or maybe you're exhausted from the week ahead, so you just need to take a little extra time for you to decompress, for you to disconnect from the world, to get your head, your mind right. For some of you guys, the outside world may be a little bit overstimulating. If you're an introvert like me, you just kind of need days to unplug, to unwind. For some of you guys, you may be closing the blinds and focusing on something, putting your mind at work to kind of fix a problem, to try to find solutions to something that you have been dealing with, if, whether it be business. For some of you guys, you might be studying. This is a time for you to lock it in and to study on something that is important to you. Wednesday is the third. So this is, yeah, this is the time when um, Venus is gonna be conjunct Neptune too. So um, this, for some of you guys, you might actually feel very sensitive to energies during this time. So keep an eye out for that. On Thursday, we have the Page of Swords, Six of Swords, and the Ten of Wands. Okay, so this is another thing too, where life, life be life in. Ten of Wands, Ace of Swords, and the Six of Swords. This is where we, this is where a checklist, a to-do list, journaling, and getting things out of your head. Now, I speak for myself because I think a lot. I'm ruled by Mercury though, so my thoughts just be going. But um, this is sometimes where you get your thoughts out of your head onto paper. So, but either way, it seems like you have a sense of empowerment. It just feels like there's a lot to do on Thurs on Thursday. A lot of things that need to be need to do a lot of things that you've already done for some of you guys this is a wonderful time for you to sign up for gym memberships or do some type of physical fitness plan if you're if that's if that's something that you're considering if you are making plans for the weekend this is whatever it is that you have to do in order to make that a reality or if it's not this weekend then weekends to come let's say if you're planning a vacation a trip this is where you're kind of grinding and kind of doing research and cementing things um, getting it getting it finished, getting it finalized. This doesn't necessarily feel so exhausting or overwhelming or draining. It just feels like you're taking care of business and it will be for the better good. It could be something as simple as you just like take handling like all of the laundry, like cleaning the house, you know, um, maybe after the whole week of you cooking meals or whatever the case is, this is gonna be Thursday is the day where you're kind of picking up the pieces um, of the house and putting things back together, especially before the weekend hits. Now let's look into Friday. Friday, we have Five of Pentacles, King of Wands, 
and the page of cups. Now it's funny because it just seems like you don't need a lot, a whole lot to have a whole lot of fun. <laughs> like Friday just feels like a good vibe. This feels like community. It feels like coming together. It feels like, um, for some of you guys, you're trying something new. You are stepping outside of your comfort zone. You are vibing, you're vibing high, you're ready, you're prepared. Don't let the five of cups, five of pentacles show up, make you feel disheartened in any way. It just seems like with a little, you do a whole lot. With a little, you go, a, you take it. Let's say if you're having a party, I don't know if you guys are having a party this weekend, but it's like you find like deals. Like you may find deals or go to the dollar store and something about like spending a little kind of carries it, it looks bigger and better than what it with the king of wands you're able to make something small or half look whole so that's that's really 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 cool for some of you guys you might be receiving invites for some of you guys you're going on a date for some of you guys you're linking up with someone um and that just seems really really good for some of you guys you're going on an adventure going hiking getting active um, it's this isn't very still energy. It's very active. It's moving. It's interactive. It's engaging for some of you guys You're going for a walk, you know signing up for a class. There's a lot of movement here on Friday Let's go ahead and lean into the weekend. We have wow. We have the wheel of fortune We have six of cups and six of pentacles now This is when on Saturday you are going to hear news of something a turn of events something that you're waiting for something that you're looking looking for waiting to come in this is when it finally comes in i don't know if this is from the start of this week and now you hear about it on saturday but this seems to be like okay this is what we're working with this is what we got this is what we're dealing with the energy feels very exciting it feels like now that we know now we could do this now we can move forward um it, it seems pretty this seems pretty I, I get really good energy on Saturday. I'm not gonna lie, I get really good energy on Saturday. For some of you guys, you might be going back to friendships, um, circles, family, things of, like community, little places. It could be a phone call. This feels really, really, really good. It's just like, wow, it's good to hear from you. Good to see you. Good to hear that you're doing well. Let's go ahead and do this again. It feels really promising. On Sunday, okay, whoo, girl. We have the tower card, we have the moon, and we have seven of wands. Now, I don't know how I feel about these energies. I don't like the Tower card, Seven of Wands, and the Moon card together. For me personally, this probably has a lot to do with the Eclipse, which is going to be happening on Monday. I'll link that video down below. But something is going to seem to kind of disrupt the energy of the week. Enjoy the week as a whole as much as you can. I don't know if this necessarily needs to be a bad or a negative thing. It just concerns me that the Seven of Wands is showing up and says, like, wow, I wasn't expecting that. And um, the moon card for me can be a little bit wonky and wobbly and just all as a whole. So if I were you, what I would do on this Sunday is I would probably have a Netflix and chill type of day, like literally Netflix and chill. Um, or I would, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why I'm envisioning like pudding, like rice pudding, like maybe just a day where you just make something comforting for yourself um where you kind of cozy in you read books I, it, honestly this week as a whole feels very full so what you don't need to ne necessarily fill every fiber of every moment of your day for this week with things to do monday sunday seems to be very restorative that's the way that i would use this energy taking bath taking naps moseying around the house kind of or staying in your little bubble maybe going to yoga something that's more restorative and quiet this is also, you may actually want to free up your own time, your own energy to be there for others who might be dealing with certain things. You might hear news of someone that is that you care about, a friend, a family, specifically women. They might be going through something here. So you may want to keep your phone off DND, on vibrate, keep it on your person so that you can answer it in, in the event that a friend calls you and needs you. I don't know if I speak for myself here, but like I'm always the friend that people call to when things are popping off, when things are happening. I'm always the one to answer my phone and be like, hey, where are you? Okay, I'm here, I'm there, I'll, I'll help you fix it. And then just put them right back. <laughs> I'm always the friend to call when you're in a pinch or you need to talk or something happened. I'm your girl. So that's, I think, why my mind just kind of goes to, okay, Sunday, mental note. Make sure that my phone is on vibrate so that I can answer it um, in the event that someone needs me. But that's just always Virgos, right? Like that's, you always got to have a Virgo friend. I'm that friend. 
All right, my loves, I hope that this was good for you as it was for me. What? Um, and make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from. If you need me, you can find me working my magic in the apothecary that's in the next room. This is my living room. Thank you guys again so much for hanging out with me. You're a real one if you're watching from start to finish. If you haven't checked out the solar eclipse and Aries video that I posted, oh my gosh, you definitely need to check that one out. I'll link it down below. Until then, make sure that you're subscribed to this YouTube video. YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!